guess what? I'm back. I'm back to do another video. Now, this video focuses on getting organized in the kitchen. Now, we all have to be better organized in the kitchen. I don't care how organized you are, and you're probably going to think I am crazy organized, uh, but we all have areas to improve on. I have drawers that would frighten you. However, my main kitchen area and my cooking areas, I really try to keep organized because there is nothing more frustrating than not being able to find the tools you need and get on with the cooking part. And once I, um, it wasn't until I, I was diagnosed with the celiac disease and I ended up having to cook everything from scratch that I realized how dreadfully disorganized I was in the kitchen. Once I got a handle on that, things got to be a heck of a lot easier. Now there's, you don't have to be all OCD like me because I have to be so careful about no cross-contamination of my foods. However, there's some really simple things you can do that is gonna make your life way easier in the kitchen. The first thing that you need to do is decide what of your products need to be in their original packaging. Can you take them out? If you can take them out and put them into jars, you can reuse jars that you get for other products. Like let's say you buy peanut butter and you've got the peanut butter jar, save it, reuse it. Or you can go out and buy mason jars when they're on sale uh, during canning season or go to garage sales to buy. You can find a ton of jars and you'll see lots of jars in my house and a lot of them I just got at garage sales or when I knew people were moving and asked them if they wanted to get rid of any of their big jars and uh, end up getting jars like that. And you'll see in one of my cupboards, I have a stash of jars and sometimes it ends up, I end up with too many jars. But if you can get stuff out of their original packaging, you can end up having so much extra room because the packaging does take up a lot of room. The key here is if you do transfer into another jar, uh, if there's directions, let's say it's a, a mix or something, uh, just cut out the directions and tape it onto the box or the jar. And I recommend you use the big packing tape. Now, where's my packing tape? Of course, where's my packing tape? Let me find my packing tape. usually have it in the kitchen but because it's Christmas time this is packing tape this is the big packing tape so sturdy so strong do not use scotch tape that stuff's useless for, for the purposes that we have this stuff is the best now when I'm talking about taking stuff out of its original packaging like rice okay this is what I do I put it in these big honking jars and I make a label that gives me the directions of how to cook it. And then I take the packing tape and it's all the way around so that no matter what, nothing's damaging this label, okay? So this is an awesome tool for all of your rice, your grains, your quinoa, your boxes of stuff. Now, let me show you. <laughs> okay, let me turn you around. Okay, this is one of my cupboards. The only thing that's really left in its original boxes are the salts, and that's because I fill them up so often, and they're really small and compact. But we've got the baking soda and the cornstarch, and you notice, for anybody who's seen the teriyaki video, I have the directions for our cornstarch slurry right on there. And for all my grains, I have the directions, all of them. I have my little cheat sheets here that tell me, you know, certain tricks and tips I need in the kitchen. Now, I do this whole thing for the ingredients, taking them out of their original packaging for a lot of stuff. 
see even my popcorn. These are old spice um, containers, the big humongous bulk ones. So I have sweetened and unsweetened coconut. And then I use these dividers a lot. There's one there, there's one there. And I also, those are so handy. If you can find them at garage sales and whatnot, pick them up. Pick up really sturdy ones at uh, places like Ikea. I use that for my dishes. And I use this for my coffee station, coffee and tea station. Now, these little guys are so handy. This is for tea. And all this is, is an old basket that I collected strawberries in. I took off the little handles and you'll see those scattered about my kitchen all over the place because they are perfect for holding different things and keeping them organized. So that's, and you'll notice even there's our coffee and the hot chocolate and it's got the directions on how to make more mix. And you would be amazed if you had to have the original packaging in there, it would take up so much room. Now, over here in this cupboard, we do the same thing. So, we've got our oatmeal. We've got large flake and steel cut. And it's got the directions written right on them so that we, we know what's going on with that. Certain things I have sealed up because I can't let them get contaminated. And here we have our dates and our Brazil nuts and we've got some nice roasted almonds. These are my crackers so they don't get contaminated. Now, one of the biggest issues is spices. This here is my spice drawer. And you'll notice I actually use these little jars. And what I find is keeping them in a drawer does a couple of things. It keeps them out of sunlight, keeps them away from heat. And I put them in alphabetical order so that you can find them really, really easily. And what I do is I have my spice blends that I work on. And it makes it so much easier. Now these little guys are interesting. These are little towers. I do find they're not very sturdy, however, and they do tend to break. But for things like turmeric and mustard powder, it's actually really quite good uh, for keeping small amounts or things like cloves and nutmeg and things like that. So what I do is when these little jars go on sale, I pick them up and then you can even, for some stores, you can even take them to your spice shop and fill up the actual jar instead of buying too much of something, which can be extremely handy. Now, what about the overflow for the spices? Like when you, you know, if, if you buy some that's just too much. So what I have, and because I'm vertically challenged, I gotta get my stool so I can show you. Now let's go up here, up here. Now, this, these are old orange crates. And what I do is I keep my extra spices in there. They're up, they're out of the way. This is a really tall cupboard. And they're away from heat and humidity and everything like this. These, these orange crates, perfect in the cupboard. They're so, so, so handy. So these are all of my jars and Make sure that you put what the top, put your label on the top as well, is always good to have. But make sure you don't just label the top because you know what, you're gonna switch your tops and then they're gonna get mixed up and that's bad. The other beautiful thing about keeping things in jars is that you can see how much you have left. A lot of times in the original packaging, you can't see how much you have left and when you're gonna have to get more. Now, this leads us to something that has really, really saved my bacon. <clears throat> because
because I am a very lazy cook. And I'm a very lazy organizer. And unless I have things at the ready, guess what? It's not getting done. Those labeling, that labeling stuff, not going to happen unless I have things ready. So what I do is I print off a whole bunch of my different kinds of labels. And I have them blank and they're already cut out and everything because ultimately I won't do it unless they're ready. So in my bag, I've got the oval ones, I've got recipe mix ones, and I've got freezer ones, and more freezer ones, okay? So they're already printed out because you, anytime that you see me in a video where something's not labeled, or I've just written on it with a Sharpie, that's because I didn't have any labels printed out and I was too darn lazy, and it happens. So in my spice drawer, I put these guys in my spice drawer and I just tuck them in there. The other thing I have in my spice drawer hiding are my recipe cards for my spices. And there we go. It's all well and good to have spice blend mixes that make your life easier because instead of adding 10 spices to a soup or stew, you just add a blend. Great, awesome. However, when you run out, you know, it's amazing how lazy we can get because I don't want to have to go to the website and look up the recipe and then make up more spice blend. Okay, so I made my little spice cards. And so I tuck them in next to the spices and then I just have to find the spice that I need. It's all written down for me. And then I just do it. Once a month, I'll go through my spices and I'll just get all my extra spice out fill everything up and then if that's when I know, oh, if I have nothing more to make, I've run out of spices, I write it on my list and then there you go. And it's funny because somehow this got misplaced and I knew I needed to print out another one and then I needed new spice uh, to refill a spice and I just didn't because I was too lazy because I couldn't find this. So I went ahead and I printed out another one. Um, those kinds of labels is something that makes life really, really simple for you. So here's another trick I have. Now, this is a bag I used for waffle mix, okay? So here's the recipe, waffle mix. I have all my dry ingredients in here. It says what I have to do to it. I have to add two eggs and butter and buttermilk and this is everything I have to do. Well, on the back of this label, it has the recipe for the dry mix as well. So when I want to make more dry mix. And it is taped on here by shipping tape. Now, the beauty of that with the shipping tape is... My ginger. this. This is a bag. What this is, it's a bag of cornbread mix. So when I want to make some cornbread, I take out one of these guys. I have what, everything I have to add to this mix, how I do it, when I made it the mix, and then on the back, you can't see it, I have written down how I make more dry mix. Okay. And usually when I'm making, let's say I don't have any mix left. So I'm going to make this from scratch without a mix. I will get out a bunch of these bags and say five of them and I will just add the, the dry ingredients to five different bags. Then I'll bag it up, put it in the freezer. And right now I am set with one, two, three, four cornbread mixes all done. And of course, that will happen really easily if you have your blank labels. The same with my meatballs. I have my meatballs that I make up, and then I use a freezer tag, and I write out what the temperature is, how long it needs to cook for, everything like this, and when I froze it. And it will keep you organized.
The other thing to consider is your the tools that you use. Okay, I have, let's just have a look here. Here we go. I have this little guy here full of my most used tools for cooking when I cook. Okay. What I don't have there are my rarely used utensils. I keep those at the back of my spice drawer. So things like the potato masher, the meat tenderizer, um, very specific tools go in the back there because ultimately what ends up happening is they get mixed in with your everyday use tools and then you can't find stuff. Now, this is a really handy divider that I got from Ikea. And these little guys slide up and down and you can make the compartments as big or small as you want. Now remember, I have more utensils than this. I just don't keep them in with the regular used utensils. Now, if you've got really good tongs, I love these tongs, but they don't have a closure. I use elastic bands and then they're not floppy everywhere. This one happens to already have one but that's how I just keep those there. And then here are my much less used things. I'm, I'm not using these big old spatulas all the time. I already have one spatula in my compartment up there, so I can keep two extras there. I have a soup ladle here that I don't use every day, so they can be down in a separate drawer. And then my bottom drawer is my linens. And actually those are barbecue utensils, which we only use in the summertime. So, what's the takeaway? The takeaway is we all have those drawers and cupboards that are absolute nightmares. What you need to do is get a plan and don't be frightened to change where you have everything in your kitchen. I've changed my kitchen three times because I've realized, no, it's better for me to have my rice and things here instead of over here, they were there before. It's better for me to have, I, this actually originally was my spice cupboard, where it's now my rices. Then I decided to do a spice drawer. Change things up, figure out how you move in your kitchen. Print out your labels, get things labeled get them out of their original packaging, and then you'll be much better organized. My challenge for you would be to find at least one cupboard or one drawer and clean that puppy up, organize it the way you see fit and best for your use in your kitchen. Keep organized, that will help you to keep cooking. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any extra tips, let us know in the comments below and we will do more videos around kitchen organization. See you next time.